St. John chapter 11, and I just want to read one verse there, verse 39. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Anybody ever had a stinking situation? <laughs> One day a situation you just want to put in the closet, shut the door. But I'm here to tell you that God is about to resurrect some things today. God is about to do a new thing. Tell your neighbor, God is going to do a new thing. He's going to do a new thing. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. Oh yeah, oh yeah, thank you, Lord. So today, <laughs> today we continue and actually conclude the series, My Dad and. My Dad and. And I want to minister today from the sermon topic, the process of death yields life. The process of death yields life. Here we go. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, spoke the mischief and the mission in John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. This verse is beautiful as it neatly summarizes not only today's sermon, but the sermon series. The scripture begins at a dead end. The devil is stealing, killing, and he is destroying. Yet Jesus continues the verse by concluding that because he, Jesus, is the resurrection and the life. That in spite of death, I like that, in spite of the dead and he will birth a brand new beginning. Oh, glory. I saw about five people celebrate that. In spite of the dead and in, in spite of what I thought would take me out, in spite of everything that looked dark and black and bleak, I'm here to tell you that because you serve Jesus, the resurrection, and the life, God said that after your dead end comes a new beginning. 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 Glory to God. A new beginning. Don't you ever let the devil stop you at the dead end. When you meet up at your dead end, remind him of Jesus. The resurrection and the life. You remind him of Jesus, the one who's going to bring you a brand new beginning. <laughs> oh, if the children of God could understand this to the full, we would not allow situations to kill us. Uh-uh, no, no, no. We would acknowledge the death and then move on to the burial of that situation. And then move on to the resurrection of a new thing. You see how I did that? Pretty smooth, wasn't it, huh? Yes, it happened. Yes, it died. All right, bury the thing. All right, here comes a resurrection. Here comes a new life. Here comes a new birth. Here comes a new beginning. I don't know when it happened. I, I don't know when it happened uh, where God's people uh, started concluding things at funerals. I, 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 don't, know. I don't know how, how it happened. Where God's people started uh, concluding their, their walk when, when sorrowful things happen. I've learned that beyond sorrow, there is joy. I've learned that beyond despair, there is a brand new hope of a new beginning. And that God will come through. Oh, I believe God. I believe it. Church, God wants you to get it. That when he is in your life. In your situation, that your dead and experiences newness of life. The mistake that far too many make is that not only will they call the situation dead, but then they cancel out the Christ of every crisis. Now I said, well, hold, hold on now, hold on. 
Hold on, catch this. You got to take Christ to the day and end. You got to have Christ with you at the day and end. Because if you get at the day and end without Christ, there ain't going to be no resurrection. But if you get at the day and end with Christ, there will be. You can't have Jesus around and not have life and life more abundantly. You can't have Jesus around and not just wait about one, two, three days and experience the resurrection of a situation. So many forget that our God specializes, hear me now, specializes in things thought impossible. So when even, even when your brain Reaches a dead end. Oh, come on. Even when you can't figure it out. She's going to work it out. She's going to work it out. Jesus. See, see, see you got to know that. I, I carry that's one of my reserve beats. Don't need a praise worship leader. Don't need a praise team. Don't need a band. <laughs> when I get to the end, I go, she's going to work it out. She's going to work it out. Then I start singing the lead to myself. Yes, he will. He's going to work it. In the morning, yes, he's going to work Come on, Maria, yes. He's gonna. You got to learn. Oh, Lord, you all better learn how to sing yourself a solo. Uh, when you're going through whatever you're going through, you better sing yourself into victory in the name of Jesus. Today, today I want to challenge your mindset. By the presence of the power of God, I want to have you to understand Jesus. Understand who you serve. Understand his power, his authority, his omniscience, his, his omnipotence, and his being omnipresent. Join me today as I dissect this text in order to examine the intricacies that are within it. In so doing, let's look at the following three points. Point number one, his humanity. His humanity. So important, you know. Number two, point number two. His deity. His deity. And then point number three, his command to me. His command to me. All right, let's, let's do this. Point number one, his humanity. What I find interesting, church, is that Jesus was quite aware of his humanity. In other words, he had a human side that will show forth feelings in situations that really got to him. I find this interesting because far too often preachers and pastors are just about exalted as gods and therefore they cannot be seen as weak or able to fall. Here Jesus clearly demonstrates that he is fully human while indeed fully divine. Now, why is Jesus sad? Why is Jesus brought to the point of tears? Well, church, if you had spent two years or so performing mega miracles and the people yet don't understand that you have all power, you cry too. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is bothersome. Uh, they don't understand that Jesus has. All power over sin, sickness, and the separation called death. This is troublesome. They missed it. Raising Jairus' daughter from dead. That was just a practice session or a preview of things to come. They missed that raising uh, the widow of Nain's son from death was just a practice session or a preview of things to come. Church? Oh, how should I say this? You need to read your word. <laughs> You've got to know the Bible. <laughs> You've got to know the walk of Jesus because you've got to understand that what happened in Bible days is very well happening today. You've got to be able to go through a situation and then link up or hook up to a Bible passage I say, all right, God, you did it for her. You're going to do it for me. God, you did it for him. You're going to do it for me. God, I see how you handled it. So I I'm going to hold on. I'm going to wait until my appointed time. I'm going to wait until my change comes. 
so many times, here's here's the thing, that we get very antsy, we get very uh, impatient, and we want to put a timeline on God. But how many of you know that he just comes through, and when he comes through, it's right on the top. Lord, have mercy. He may not come when I want him, but when he comes, he's right on time. Right on time. It's right on time. And so, church, when you miss the practice sessions, then you are in real trouble when it comes to time to show up and show forth in the real game. You would not be a professional player. I talk about you. You're not going to attend any practice sessions. And then, coach, put me in ready to be. Oh, you would, would you? Huh? How much more in the kingdom? Again, reading the Bible is a practice session for me. I read the Bible, I read the word, and I become entangled in it. In other words, I, it's like I'm walking it, and I'm talking it. I'm, I'm in Jerusalem, I'm in Galilee, I'm in Capernaum, and I'm walking along, and I'm seeing it, I'm experiencing it. Why? Because that's when I know that whatever I'm walking to and through in the island of Bermuda, that God's going to bring me out that God's going to bring me through. We've lost confidence in the God that we serve. And I'm here to speak and to say, we as a church will one more time begin to esteem the word of God and walk in the fullness of that power, fearing no man, fearing no voices, fearing no one but God himself. It's game time here. It's time for practice to be put into play. John eleven thirty three. 33, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, Lord have mercy, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Now, who did he see weeping? He saw Mary weeping. Oh, I'm going to take my time here. That's what got to him. <laughs> Uh-huh. Got to his humanity. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, this situation struck home as it would not be too long before he would have to deal with his mama crying. Another Mary. Oh, you, you, yeah. Okay, okay. I will, I will. <laughs> Please note, church, that Jesus groaned in his spirit. His spirit with a little s. A little s. There is a difference, you know, between writing the word spirit with a little s and the word spirit with a capital S. Uh huh. You got the little s, the capital S. Uh huh. No, no, understand this. The word spirit, no matter what, comes from the word pneuma. It can refer to the spirit of man or the spirit of God. Note that when Jesus. Tell me I can't cry. Don't tell me I can't feel pain. Don't tell me that I can't. Be, I'm, I am human. When, when, when Jesus saw Mary weeping, he was touched in his spirit. Little s. He was touched in his spirit. This means that the human part of Jesus was moved by what he saw and Felt. Let me tell you something. The reason that we can gather on a Sunday morning and we can lift up hands and praise God and jump and shout is because we're human and we feel God's glory. We feel God's presence. Well, in the same way, when you're going through something that's devastating, you've got to feel that too. Don't go through deadly situations, dark situations, and act like nothing ain't happening. You better experience that moment. If you're going to experience, hear me, if you're going to experience the resurrection, you've got to experience the death. Oh, yeah, Lord. All right, watch this now. The humanity of Jesus yet dictated that he felt the pain and the problems of others. Mm -hmm. And church, this is why we cannot be so spiritual that we are not bothered by these. I'm not the one. We cannot over... I can't... Look, look. I can't handle super spiritual people. You know... I say, boy, the sky's gray. Oh, thus said the Lord. The sky's gray, but I see a break. And hold on, the sky's gray. Go rain in a minute. Ain't that deep? Ain't that deep? You know. You know. Oh, my goodness, my, my tummy is hurting. The devil is alive. I, 
ate the wrong food. You know, you know what I'm saying, church? Let's, let's not be so super spooky spiritual that we turn off the world that we're trying. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm, that turns me off. I'm a pastor. What in the world? Come on. We are human and things get to us. No. Jesus looks at this Mary and he sees his Mary, his mother. He sees his mother. Now this name Mary means bitter, sorrowful, disobedience, rebellion. I know. I looked it up. I'm all this time. I'm just stopped that bitter. I had a look. I could see all those words. I was saying, oh no, it means all that. I'll tell you why in a minute. I was not rejoicing with anyway. As you can tell, this name carries, watch it now, this is the key. This name carries the weight of wrong. Okay, you're going to get it in a minute. This name is contrary to how one desires life ought to be. Now, I just said something. I said that this name, Mary, carries the weight of wrong. Can I tell you that Mary, the mother of Jesus, carried carried Jesus, who then carried the weight. That's why the Holy Ghost, when she was first overshadowed, she didn't talk much, she didn't say much, she pondered. She thought about it, which means that she was going to keep it in her heart because there would be experiences down the road where she would have to go back and say, okay, this is what the Holy Spirit was saying to me. Sometimes, Deacon, Holy Spirit speaks to you and nobody understands it. You don't even understand the fullness of it at that time, but I guarantee that if you stay in the house of God, if you stay loving God, if you stay serving God, that by and by the Holy Spirit will bring it back to your remembrance and you will understand why God's Holy Spirit spoke what he did to you. You've got to hold on until your change comes. Uh, yeah. So I've always spoken of the name Mary, which my name Maria comes from, as moving from bitter to sweet, from sorrow to joy, from disobedience to obedience, and from rebellion to being in complete alignment with the perfect will of God. See, see, see get this. Mary was not afraid to carry wrong so that we could be right. Mary was not hindered from carrying Jesus Christ, who will carry the wrong and our rebellion and our disobedience so that he could bring forth newness of life. So that should take some pressure off of people too, you know, because that means that God understands that we're going to miss it sometimes. But he said, that's all right, I've got a remedy. I've got an answer. I have a solution. Glory to God. This is why I love this thing. This is something else. His mother's Jesus. His mother's name was Mary. And yet out of Mary comes the master, the messenger, the Messiah. Huh? I, I don't mind if things start messy. <laughs> I promise you, I'm going to hold on to see what the end shall be. Uh, if my hands are clean, if my heart is clean, I'm going to hold on to the end. I'm, I, I just know it's going to be a message out of this. I, I just know the Messiah is going to show up out of this, and he will stand up within me in this situation. Amen. So I have a word here for somebody today, that out of your Mary, that he is out of your mess. Glory to God. God is about to birth his message. Yeah. So my question is, are you willing to be a mess. Are you willing to experience a mess? Are you willing to go through a mess so that you can become a message for Jesus Christ? A message for God. You got to go through the mess. Take your seat, people of God. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So, so, so don't stop weeping. Cry on. But cry on to your joy. Cry on to your joy. Psalms 30 and 5. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. I heard one songwriter say, listen, the morning is not necessarily what has an a.m. 
after it. Could be a p.m. Could be a midnight time. But God wakes you up to a morning. Could be a dark time. But God calls it morning. Could be a defeated time. But God says good morning. Could be a time where you thought everything was lost and done. But God says good morning. And all we've got to do is have our Holy Ghost ears attuned to the Spirit of God so that we can hear him when he says good morning and then we can speak back Good morning, and we can begin to take joy that God is bringing us through this moment with power and victory. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Tell your neighbor, Mary, don't you weep? <laughs> now, tell your other neighbor, tell Martha not to mourn. You, you, you gotta watch, you gotta watch this family drama. One member starts of the family crying, here comes another one crying. For you know everybody's crying. By the time you get to the fourth relative, then you know what they're crying about. That is crying because my sister's crying, crying because my brother's crying. But I'm telling you what, if you hear me crying, if you see me crying, understand that I I'm going to cry until my joy comes. I'm going to cry knowing that my joy is coming in the morning. I ain't going to waste my tears. My tears are precious. Oh, come on up in here. <laughs> oh, yes. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes after this. Joy comes when God completes the situation. Uh, a church, Jesus spent time in his ministry trying to have his disciples. Oh, he's trying to get the disciples. See, I, okay, okay, go catch. I don't necessarily, hear me need to have all of Bermuda to understand me. Are you in here? All my members out there? You all understand your pastor. You shouldn't be trying to figure me out. Because this is the frustration of Jesus. Have I not walked with you all this time? Haven't you seen what I've done? What more proof do you want? And you doubt who I am? That's Jesus, Jesus. Trying to get his disciples to understand that he was more than a man. Jesus showed forth miracle signs and wonders to multitudes to show them that he was more than an ordinary man. The challenge that Jesus had was no different than the challenge I have or any other local preacher has. Jesus wanted them to see him as Savior, but they saw him as Mary and Joseph's boy. That's Ray Russell's daughter. That's, that's, that's Ray Russell. She's a Russell, you know. They forgot. I'm 30 years. 30 years next month. Married 30 years next month. Some people still say that. that she's, she's a, thank you. Well, you should probably be celebrating him. <laughs> really. <laughs> Amen. You know, oh, that reminds me. Um, this is an aside, and some of you will get it. How many of you have been working at your job for five years, at least five years? How about 10 years? I put those hands, 19 years? 25? I would consider, some of you are going to catch it, I would consider that because you've been working that long, you're an expertise in your field. So I've been married, we've been married 30 years, I is an expert in marriage. You, did you catch that? I said, did you catch that? Did you catch that? Talk, talk, talk. Hi, yeah, ta. Let's settle that. <laughs> Back to the text. <laughs> so, Jesus wanted them to see his works and understand that he represented God. They saw his works and simply wanted more for their own selves. Jesus spoke in plain parables to teach them kingdom principles. However, they missed the kingdom in him. The people see Jesus crying, and let's read how they are thinking. 35 through 37. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, behold, how he loved them. And some of them said, well, you know, couldn't this man which opened 
the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died. There you go. There you go. There you go. Could not this man. That's it. They had limited the power of Jesus to being a man. That's why Jesus is going to have to show up in the way that he's going to have to show up. Because they think that he's just a man. He's more than a man. They thought it was a man doing miracles. Thought it was a man opening up blinded eyes. Thought it was a man making uh, the deaf to hear and the dumb to talk. So Jesus got to show them. Let me, let, me, let me show you all something. No wonder Jesus, now this is the word, no wonder Jesus went from weeping to mourning. 38. <laughs> Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Let me beg of you. Do not get into a situation and cause Jesus to move from weeping to mourning. Mm. Mm -hmm. Believe that Jesus is Lord, King, Priest, Healer, Deliverer. Believe that Jesus can do anything but fail. Jesus is about to turn the corner and move from his humanity to number two, his deity. His deity. While they saw Mary at the grave, Jesus saw Mary at the cross. Jesus sees Mary, his mother, at the cross. In other words, Jesus looks at Sister Mary and sees Mother Mary. For this reason, Jesus will make sure to take care of Sister Mary because he's going to follow the same pattern at the cross and make sure that Mother Mary is taken care of. Mary will not be left in her current state. I want to talk to somebody right there. That whatever situation you are in, that Jesus went to the cross so that you would not have to stay in your current state. I want you to hear me. Hmm? That whatever you're grieving about, Whatever is tormenting you, whatever you believe has control over you, that you would understand that, listen, Jesus took care of my situation at the cross. See, see, we got to go back to believing the Bible, you see. That everything was concluded. If it was concluded, that means it's a new beginning. Okay, all right, I'm going to help somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. After more. <laughs> And so church, when you go through your grave-like situation or your cross situation, Jesus also promises to take care of you. That's why I hope I don't offend anybody when I console or whatnot. I always bring them to that happy end, and I'm trying to belittle what you're going through. I'm just trying to take you through to where I know God's going to have you to go through. Because if I join with you in that moment, we both may need Pastor Sima to come and help us. But what I want to make sure is that we are on our way to a new beginning. Amen? Amen. Amen. No, no, no. Let me read verse 38 again. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. That which is situated between your problem. Oh, okay. You know, the stones are always quite heavy, aren't they? Okay, okay come on now. Come on. Okay. All right. Okay. The stone is always between the problem and the solution. The stern apparently concludes something. The stern puts it away. You don't see it anymore. Now, here's what I need somebody to get. We like to bury situations, but unless we unveil and reveal situations, We'll never get the victory over it to move. We got to deal with it, sis. Lord, and mercy is going to cause you some pain. You know, you may not be understood, but listen, 
understand, here it is again, that if you're walking with Jesus Christ, that he has already given you the authority to have your new beginning. But the new beginning won't happen until you deal with what's blocking you from... Oh, Lord. Okay, go there, Seaman. So you have to deal with what's blocking you from your new beginning. Some of you say you let it go, but it's still in there. It's, it's got... What an ugly thought that the dead thing still has power to control the living being. Huh? Rotten and stinking, but we're giving it... Po- Ain't letting no rotten, stinking, dirty situation control my life. You know what I'm saying? Now, you know, I like happy Christians. I let no grumpy. <laughs> now, man, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And so, again, Jesus is weeping. Watch this. Because he knows that they lack the present faith. But he has the answer for them. Some of you think that God failed you, Jesus failed you. No, no, no. You haven't yet gone by that faith, upgraded your faith so that you can remove the stern. The stern is blocking you. We'll talk about it some more. Between your current reality and your reality to come. That which is blocking the passageway to your new thing. Uh, it's in there. It has potential of new life. But it'll never come forth until you remove the stern. So I'm going to tell somebody that thought that you have about that person, that attitude that you have about that person, that experience you've had, you can't seem to forgive them. You better forgive them. That's a stern of unforgiveness. And you've got to get it out of the way so that you can experience your new beginning. God wants to give you your new beginning. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, that which is a hindrance is the stern moving you from going forward. A sterny heart, how about that? A sterny attitude. A sterny disposition. I shall not be moved. <laughs> okay, oh, oh. okay, no, 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 no. That's why I love Pentecost, you know. And I think today is Pentecost, it might be. Pentecost is Sunday? Yes. What? Pentecost, I'm speaking about fire. Nobody sits in a house on fire. The house is on fire. No, when you got fire, you be moving. Something is moving. Can I pause to have a Pentecost to break? When you're filled with the fire of the Holy Ghost, God himself will remove the spread so that you won't be hindered. You will be stopped. God will empower you with the glory of God that everything that has stopped you in the past, God will cause it to be rolled away. Oh, Jesus. I feel glory, you know. Oh, can't block you, can't stop you. People of God, stands will block your blessings. And stones will keep buried (laughs) that which God should resurrect. That's why, Sister Gail, you go through a sterny situation, you take it on, you feel it because you're human, but you realize, hey, in that cave is my smile. (laughs) That this situation tried to take my smile. In that cave is my testimony. This, this, this cave and this stern try to keep my testimony. Uh-huh. And because of that, you realize I am not going to let a stern. As a matter of fact, I'm going to become a lively stern. And I'm going to be filled with the glory of God so that he can remove anything that stops me from experiencing my breakthrough. Somebody say, breakthrough. 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 Hallelujah. The stern is in front of the entrance to your next place of destiny. What? No, 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 okay. okay. See, you all don't let sterns bother you when it's time to hop on a plane. Oh, I know what I can talk about. I know what I can talk about. You all don't let Corporation of Hamilton stop you when it's time to get your spot for the parade tomorrow. Uh-uh. I'm, I'm just baffled. Because I'm sure some church people can't make prayer meetings 
but the camped out on the street. <laughs> like Pastor Dungarder today. But I'm telling you, God will not be in competition with a parade. If you can make time for a parade, if you can spend overnight for a parade, if you can do this and that for a parade, hey, go to the parade, enjoy it. But I'm going to tell you what, I will be in God's house on time. I will be here experiencing the glory of God. I will be here honoring the presence of God. God gave us that day. And if he should tarry and we experience tomorrow, remember that. God gave us the day. Yeah. You got people up there saying you got people can't make church today. Because they're camping out. But go ahead, you five foolish virgins. Because when if Jesus came on the 24th of May holiday, there'd be a lot of Christians left behind. But I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up. In the first resurrection, I'm going up. I gotta miss out. Not me. Not me. I know I heard somebody out. They say out and then amen. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh yeah. See, I have my priorities straight. I know who gave me breath. I know who gave me the ability to walk and talk. And I will honor God first and foremost. Oh, yeah. Ha, I ain't saying no more. I can say a lot. So the stern, watch this, in your life is whatever you have permitted, this is good, to remain at the mouth of your dreams come true. Because the stern was at the mouth of the cave. <laughs> okay, this is so beautiful. The stern was at the mouth of the cave. So as long as the stern was at the mouth of the cave, the cave was shut up. <laughs> the cave was silent. <laughs> the cave had to be quiet. Uh -huh. And that's what the enemy wants to do with your mouth. Shut you up. Huh? Huh? Everything you ever said. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, get, I, tell, I tell folks all the time. I tell, tell Patrice. I tell Deaconess Nancy. Uh, I tell Sister Tyra. You come up to my house, record a commercial. Sister Yashan, you can record a commercial. Your mouth is open, bless me, Lord. The enemy's coming to shut you. <laughs> you think he wants another poem? Another analogy coming out of your mouth? Oh, he's going to try to shut you up. But see, that's where you got to know. Again, I serve Jesus. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And so we born Jesus, because I know that joy is coming in the morning. Uh, we born Jesus. I know what you can do. Take me to the cave. Meet me at the cave. Come forth, Lord, have mercy. Meet me at the cave. Tell your neighbor, meet me at the cave. Oh, meet me at the cave. Meet me where they try to shut me down. Meet me where they try to close my mouth. Meet me at the cave. I got that. I heard you, Holy Ghost. Be careful of where people want to meet you. <laughs> See, some people want to meet you on their territory where they've prayed certain things. They got atmosphere. Uh uh. No, no. I'm, I'm going to where Jesus said. I know it looks contrary, but Jesus he cometh to the cave. So we're going to the cave. I know the power that's going to happen at the cave. I know at the cave, I'm going to be a cave woman. I'm going to be a cave woman. I'm going to be at the cave, and I'm going to watch the glory of God come forth at the cave. Meet me at the cave. That's right, meet me at the cave. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see what Jesus does with such a stern. 39. Jesus said, take ye away the stern. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, like he didn't know. It, by this time he stinketh. And I, I want to go old English on you here. The king's English. 
ETH, yes, sir. In other words, it's not like the situation stinks. It's getting stinkier and stinkier. It gets, gets getting worse by the minute. You ever been in a situation just getting worse by the minute? You, you need Jesus to show up at the cave. All right, all right. By this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Listen here, church. No excuses, no hesitation, no delay. Take the stick. When Jesus tells you to do something, don't give an explanation about why you shouldn't do it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Don't tell Jesus, but I, I don't think so. Because um, according to my knowledge, it's been dead. Jesus is omniscient. You don't tell omniscient information he don't already know. Good Lord Almighty, take the stone away. Sometimes we make excuses and thereby we actually end up blocking our own blessings. That's why I look, I'm, I'm, I'm excuses free. When God says to say something, I say it. When he says to do something, I do it. I'm not even begging for an excuse because I may come up with one in my logical mind. So before I get my mind set, I'm going to have the mind of Christ. Take it away the stone. Move that mountain out of my way. Yeah, that's what a stone is, is a mountain. A mountain experience, huh? How you went through something last year, went through something at the beginning of this year. Thought you would never make it through. Guess what? You're still here. You're still here. So that means that God is bringing you through. And not only is he bringing you through, he's bringing you through more than a conqueror. Good Lord Almighty. More than a conqueror. More than you could have imagined. More than you could have even have uh, perceived and conceived in your mind. God said he's about to make you... Somebody ought to catch that more than a conqueror. Lord have mercy. I don't know what the situation is, but I just heard more than a conqueror. I just heard more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. So, I don't care how long the stern has been there. <laughs> don't meet with me and tell me why I can't get done. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. If I said I want it, I want Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If I said I want it, I'm talking about being, I'm talking about being your leader. Yeah. When God shares, I ain't talking about my carnal flesh. I'm talking about when God shares me something, yeah. and that's what he shared me. My mind's there, you know. Yeah. It don't rest from it. It don't slacken from it until I see it manifest. Yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no excuses. I don't care what shall be revealed behind this stand. Yeah. I know when it comes out, it's going to look ugly. That's why so many don't want it. But if I've got to go through ugly to get to my new thing, come on ugly. Uh-huh. <laughs> I will not let fear keep me from removing the stone. No, I will understand that I am under divine orders to take away the stone. So many, and I want to speak to Bermuda here. So many, even sinners now, hear me. Hear the spirit, you know, um, pulling on them. You know, I wake up and this is what I heard. But they don't move on it. I better not go too far. You got to, when Jesus speaks, you got to move then. You, you can't delay. You got to, bam. As soon as eternity speaks it, that means he's ready for it to show up in, in real time. When Kairos speaks it, Kronos is about to manifest. Do you hear me? Glory to God. John 11, 41 and 42. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But, here it is, because of the people which stand by, I said, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. All this time they still don't get who he is. Church, please note that the stern is removed and it does not stop there. <laughs> the stern is removed, it doesn't stop there. After Jesus removes the stern, he does something on purpose. Now let me be very clear in saying, when Jesus prayed, he prayed to the Father. He didn't pray to impress people. <laughs> he didn't pray for the people to come in agreement. See, understand it. They're going to hear him, but he's not praying for them to come in agreement. 
He is praying to the Father, knowing that everybody will hear. See, it's sort of like what I do. I ask God about things, then I speak them. I know you're all going to hear it. But I'm not speaking except what I hear God say. Because only what he says will become manifest. So understand, Jesus is trying to teach his friends that he is more than their friend. Oh, oh wait. I, everybody wants to be the pastor's friend. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Andrew is like, no, you don't. No, you don't for real. I'm friendly, but you don't want to be my friend. I see you. <laughs> he, Jesus, is the Son of God. He is their Savior. See, that's the issue now. Let me, let me get this real clear. They don't know how to identify Jesus the man, Jesus the Son of God. Just like people don't know how to separate Maria Seaman from Pastor Maria Seaman. Everybody else wants Maria, Maria. I've got people calling me Maria. I don't even know who they are. But I know where they are, so I just say hi. You, you see what I'm saying? They don't, they don't understand, oh, Jesus, that there is a certain word, let me help somebody here, that God has placed in our mouth for such a time as this. He, Jesus, is their Savior. Please remember that all of this time, Jesus has been performing miracles, and yet they still did not get who he was and who he is. Therefore, Jesus, now soon to be crucified, speaks forth that he is praying, I'll say it again, to his Father. They, oh, that's good, Holy Ghost. Thank you for that. They have identified him as Joseph's boy, yep. Yeah? He's saying, I'm speaking to my father. Did you get that? People will limit you to these relationships and not to this one. He wants them to know who he is. No filter, no cloudiness. This is full open truth. Jesus is talking to God while they are all around him. Jesus is looking up while they're looking around. Jesus is focused on God the Father while they are yet focused on the dead situation. That's another thing. Stop focusing. I ain't got time to park it at dead ends. I ain't got time to park it at grieving moments. There's too much joy coming in the morning. There's too much to be happy about. There's too much to celebrate. Come on now. <laughs> Jesus, you don't mind that, do you? Goodness, Lord of mercy. Church, you and I are going to have to learn to look up. Just, just look up. See, right there, when you really look up, you can't see nobody. You can't see. Yeah, you're in a different space, a different place. Yeah, we got to learn to look up. When all around your soul gives way, you are going to have to look up. Uh-huh. When it is very easy to look around at the, uh, don't start doing that, look around at the faces, you better look up to God, the author and the finisher of your faith. Uh-huh. If you look around, you will witness doubters, hesitators, frustrators, and haters. However, as you look above, you're reminded of your relationship with God. And that God is about to do the impossible. Look at the deity of Jesus, verse 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice. I like that. I like that. I don't know who said Christians are supposed to be quiet. Right. Not Christians. Oh, no. I know that's right. <laughs> Not Christians. Cry with a loud you, you, know, you know what a loud voice says? I'm got confidence in this. <laughs> Cry with a loud voice. Oh, yeah, I'm confident. I'm not scared. I ain't hiding. I ain't talking about I'm in the full walls of Shekinah. And that's the only time I'm going to speak forth and get scared like scurdy pants. Oh, no. I'm going to speak with a loud voice. What I know, what I say. The Lord. And so, and he had thus spoken. He cried. So watch this. Oh, that's sweet. He goes from weeping to mourning to crying. But it's a different type of cry. Get it now. Get it now. Get it now. He's not crying. He's crying. God wants to take you from the weeping to the morning to the crying. From the weeping to the morning to the crying. You see that? That's where he went. <laughs> he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. In other words, he identifies the situation. Well, you sure enough know. I'm back to see it now. Can I tell you what I see? He got, he got Mary, Martha, right? You know, all these people all around, right? And if Jesus had just said, come forth, 
all these relatives, you be looking like, uh, uh, all these relatives of all the people would have come forth. So he's got to have this thing under control. So he said, oh, no, 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 not all of you. I'm dealing with one. Lazarus, come forth. Strong words. I just had that picture. Strong words. Confidence. No stalling. No st 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 stuttering. No stuttering. No way. Whatever is dead in the cave, I'm about to speak it to life. Okay, Lazarus was a dead man. You may have a dead situation, a dead friendship, a dead dream, a dead purpose. I'm here to tell you that if Jesus is in your life, you have a right to take away the stern and call the dead thing to life. You've got a right to have the stern removed. Jesus speaks. No, no, no. Jesus doesn't even speak. Jesus commands. You see the difference? Commands. He commands, and the dead thing must come forth. Now, the challenge here is that Jesus woke it up, but Jesus will not get it going. Okay, let me say that again. The challenge here is that Jesus wakes it up, but he won't get it going. Let me get this stern out of the way. The stern's out of the way. Come help me lift up this stern, boy. Heavy stern. Her strength. Yeah. Woo. A little bit of rock on that, too. A uh, little bit of rock on that. So it stirs, stirs out of the way. And so now, let me explain my next point, number three. His command to me. His command to me, not his suggestion. All right. Church, I am clear. Jesus will do the miracle. Uh-huh, yep. That's the part he will take care of. Yet there is a part that does not require a miracle. It requires movement on the part of you and me. The miracle, Jesus. The next move, you and me. 44. And he that was dead came forth. Check him out, church. Check him out. It's coming forth. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Oh, Lord. And his face was, was bound. Oh, Jesus, I hear you. About with a napkin. Hmm. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Take a look at the bound man. You can tell what face he has. So even when Jesus permits something to resurrect, it'll never take on its face, its destiny, or its purpose until you do something. Oh God, do you get that? Hi, y'all don't both care. It's alive, but it is not loose to its purpose. And too many Christians are alive, existing, but not loosed to walk in their purpose. Huh? The Bible doesn't say it just to say it. He, he's tied or bound. Bound. Okay, that, that's stronger than tied. He's bound hand and foot. If you are bound hand and foot, you are of no use to the kingdom. Because everybody's got to help you. When God has set you in the body to be able to help somebody else. Oh God. Oh God. So he's alive, but going nowhere. So many are alive, but not walking in their purpose. You got to be able to flow. Flow in your purpose. You need freedom for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So many are existing but not living a life worthy of legacy. So many are satisfied in breathing but have no interest in bettering their self. Some people actually just don't mind existing. I'm alive. It's okay. 
It's as good as it's going to get. My God, do you know how many people have that in their mind? You've got to have a vision that God, I may not be able to see right now. I may be bound head and foot, but I know that there's a greater coming. I know that there's more to come. I know that you don't want me stuck in this situation. I know that you have more for me. Oh, God. Got to have a vision. Have a vision. Listen, I don't mind dealing with Lazarus to a point. To a point. But like, because I know the Bible, I know that it doesn't stop here. God Almighty, Jesus. Let me hurry on. Got five minutes to conclude this. Here we go. This is a statement, y'all. Watch this. The dead can be awakened by God. However, the next move speaks to something that our people truly have an issue with. Watch this. What God showed me here was that while Jesus can cause the embalmed to be awakened, it is the people that must now empower. Dusty one. I never met so many black people that don't like to empower black people. My God, why don't we celebrate each other? Why don't we lift each other up? Why don't we help each other? Good God Almighty, got to put your foot on that one. The devil is a liar. You got to empower. Oh, yeah. Yes. Good Lord. My God, I could go for We got to empower the awakened Lazarus. God will not do what we can do. God won't do what we can do. Come on, Brother Jamal, Deacon Trot, Deacon Derek, Elder Seaman, loose that man. Come on, let me see. Oh, Lord. Lord, oh, Jesus. Ah, that's right, that's right. Mm hmm. Loosen him. Gonna loose him for his purpose. Oh, gonna reveal to him the unseen. Gonna get rid of everything that was tying him down. Oh, gonna show him his potential. Man helping man. Man empowering man. Gonna, he's a young man, but he needs his future. He's a young man, he has a future. And so they're gonna lose him. Get rid of the old grave hood. Get rid of everything that was suffering. Get rid so the man can run for his life. Run on, run on, run on. Look, no, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. You are so in tune because God said to me, Maria, the first day that he was born was his first birthday. But when he came out of the tomb, it was his new birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Whoa! Whoa! I, I didn't even put it in my notes. Because I said, nah, Maria, don't arrange it, don't arrange it. Happy birthday. When you come out of the grave, you may be wobbling. But when other people empower you and release you from bump. Let me tell you something here. As a pastor, everyone in this church, you have been released to your destiny and purpose. There's no grave clothes holding you down. Whatever God has spoken to you is what shall be. Embrace your future. Embrace it with boldness. To do what God has called you to do. How? Shame on grand but loose and set free for his purpose director never seek to stop another as Lazarus walks in his purpose your purpose will unfold too 
Lazarus became a live witness of what would happen with Jesus. And when you and I lose each other, we also show what God is about to do in the lives of others. Your dead end is nothing but a new.